There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I'm outside and I'm wearing a mask just to show you my bandit style in the middle of the summer in the, in the middle of a pandemic. Well, it's uh, delightful to be outside. It's a very gray day. It doesn't seem like it's going to rain, but it's a very gray day. It's the 20% chance of rain at the moment, and it's a little muggy. 23 already. It's 7 a.m. So here I am. I woke up early, and life is... Well, let's do a life update. With a cold coffee from the vending machine. So I'm doing great. Kenji's doing great. We're doing fine. Uh, great is maybe too strong a word, but we're doing fine. Everything is okay. But the uh, numbers of new infections in Tokyo has skyrocketed over the past two weeks. Yesterday it was 366. That's 100 diagnoses higher than the previous record, which was like in early April or something. So I don't know if Tokyo is going to be headed for the Japanese style lockdown. They call it an emergency declaration that actually seemed to work. I was so skeptical about it and it seemed to work. The thing that I hadn't factored in, not being Japanese, is that the Japanese people don't need a bunch of rules. They just need a stern message from their leaders and they will do whatever their leaders say. So we never got very many cases of COVID-19 and then things went down to way, way under like 50 a day or 25 a day, I can't remember. And then the state of emergency was lifted a couple months ago. I am still working about 40% online and I'm a, what's the math? Doris, help me out, 60% back in the classroom and apparently next month, even more of my classes, I'll be basically about 85, 90% back in the physical classroom. But now the numbers are going up so I don't know what will happen. I'm okay. I think if you're wearing a mask, you can do whatever you want, really. So the things that I am still avoiding is going out to a restaurant with somebody other than Kenji. The restaurants here seem to, the ones I've been to, they have, you know, gotten rid of half of their tables. And staff are all masked. And so I'm fine with going there either by myself or with Kenji, but nobody else. And I don't know if I will ever, until there's a vaccine, I don't think I will go out to a restaurant with my family, with my friends. I, I just think it's, no, 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 no. An outside restaurant, which there aren't very many in Tokyo, but that would be different. I would feel safe doing that. Meeting friends to go for a walk, having a little picnic in the park. Those, I haven't done any of that, just once with my cousin, Lindsay. But yeah, my social life is still very much online or non-existent. Uh, Kenji and I had planned to finally go and celebrate his birthday, which was in early April. And of course, everything was, you know, there was nothing, we couldn't do anything in, on his actual birthday because of coronavirus situation. And now it's kind of swept back. So we have canceled our plan. We're going to do something very similar to what Kenji did for mine. I I'm, was planning to just take him out for lunch, go shopping wherever he wanted in the afternoon, go for dinner. And that would be his birthday. But we've canceled it for the time being because the Koike, our re-elected mayor, has told everybody, even though it's a four-day weekend, stay home. And people will stay home, and we're listening to her. She's kind of gotten her shit together about coronavirus, much more than the prime minister who has just last week introduced a campaign, a government campaign, to get Japanese people traveling within the country to stimulate the economy. Well, nobody outside Tokyo wants Tokyo people. And in fact, they're putting signs up saying, if you don't live in our prefecture, in our county prefecture, don't come into this restaurant so people are not welcome where they go and it's spreading the coronavirus so and there's still a lot of ineptitude so we're gonna lay low all of which is to say that uh, here i am for a friday reads outdoors back to regular programming for the day and i have had a great week so i think i told you last week i'm finished with book two prize stuff those videos will be going up i have five books to tell you about i started five books for reading rush uh, this was maybe the biggest biggest pleasant surprise. Edmund White's The Unpunished Vice, uh, Life of Reading, a reading memoir, which I was very skeptical about, but I had also been skeptical about Ian Lee's similar type book, and it changed my reading life. This isn't going to change my reading life, but this is delightful. 
I'm really, really enjoying it. It's the kind of book you can just pick up and put down. You can read two pages a day, like I might be reading this until Christmas. But it's just erudite. I'm disagreeing with things he's saying or his take on different writers and agreeing with others and just finding him a delightful companion. And I didn't think I would enjoy reading about somebody else reading, but I, in fact I am. It's really, really good. So many little tidbits. I really enjoyed his comments about precision and vagueness in writing and how vagueness in writing is a great fictional technique too. I hadn't ever really thought about that. And who does he talk about? Pierre Loti, French writer, disenchanted, as being an example of vague literature. Henry James spoils the point, and I don't like James, but I, that I think I have my own personal reasons more than anything else, and the spoils of point, Pointon. Anyway, that was just something really interesting to think about. So it's really kind of a brain tease and also <laughs> lots of gossip along the way, too. And one of his best friends, Charles, early boyfriends, later in his life got involved with an organization called TAIL. Can you guess what that spells out? Total Anal Involvement League. <laughs> so yeah, they're just learning lots, people, learning lots. <laughs> and just it couldn't be more of a contrast. Oh my God, this is just heartrendingly beautiful. The Gifts of the Body by Rebecca Brown. It's a book that I had on my shelf, got autographed when I went to the Key West Literary Seminar on AIDS and literature in the late 1990s. Never read it. My liquidated my library, it, it went. But Greg of Supposedly Fun has been raving about it. I got another copy and oh my God, I'm so grateful. I read the first story. It's a collection of short stories about a home care worker and her experience. So I don't know, it's probably autobiographical. I don't know, I don't care. Deeply moving stories about her work, the protagonist's work with people living with AIDS, as we called them back in the day, uh, HIV positive people at the end of their lives. And it's the kind of thing, and I mean, I don't think it's for every reader maybe, but I didn't think it would be for me. And I thought I would find it overly sentimental and something about the lightness of her touch. She, I was almost sobbing on the train reading the first story. <laughs> That's what I sent Greg a message. I'm kind of mad at you. You almost made me lose it. Public transit in Tokyo. Just achingly so, such a light touch. So incredibly moving and it took me, it's taking me back to I did quite a bit of this type of, not, I wasn't a home care worker, but I did a lot of volunteer work when I was a much younger man at the height of the epidemic in Canada, in various cities that I lived in, doing this kind of work. And uh, so it's bringing all that back, and maybe I was resisting it because of that, and it's just, it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Oh my God. I can't believe how she found just the right note to hit that there's absolutely nothing sentimental about it, but it just breaks your heart. Every, every story has broken my heart. I, I just love it. Also going really well at the, at the beginning anyway, is this Australian novel, The Strays by Emily Bitto. It's really good. It's just sucked me in from the first chapter. Uh, it's a story about two childhood friends and one comes from a kind of almost tippy artist family and the other protagonist comes from a very conventional family growing up I think in the 30s at the beginning it feels like a very modern and so I was quite jarred to see that it opens in the 1930s I think in Australia which makes the cavalier uh, sexually open lifestyle of the artist family all the more uh, fascinating to read about but then in the present of the story we learn that these two childhood girlfriends school friends from the age of six years old or something the protagonist and the artist's, one of the artist's daughters, that they have been estranged for decades. So I don't know what that's about, and that's keeping me going. It's really, really well done. I'm enjoying it so much. Also starting out really well is Ngugi Wationgo's second novel, The River Between. I would say it's maybe not quite as engaging as his debut, Weep Not Child, but still really good. I'm enjoying it. It's well done. It's about the Gikuyu people in what is now Kenya, and how many of them work uh, Christianized by the colonials and others resisted and it's about two families on both sides of that divide both sides of the river and female genital mutilation or female circumcision is a central theme so it is definitely engrossing so that was all the string of really books that have started out 
really, really well. I'm very, very pleased. And then sadly, I do have a bail. I didn't get along at all with this novella that I had been so looking forward to. That reminds me by Derek Owusu. It's definitely a matter of taste. Eric Carl Anderson loved it. I don't think he's done a full review on booktube, other than maybe in a wrap-up, but he's, I'm pretty sure he has re reviewed it on his blog, so I'll put a link to that. I couldn't stand the writing. I thought it was pretentiously stretching and not quite reaching the poetic. I was just pissed off on the first page by the sentences that just didn't land and that strained so hard to reach some profundity that was not intelligible to me. And, you know, maybe I'm stupid. It's definitely a possibility, people. But I, I really couldn't get along with the writing at all. If I see if I can find a representative sentence. It's about a young black British man of African origin and his childhood with foster, in foster care as well as with his own biological family and mental illness is a central theme of the, of the book. Anyway, I've just flipped through it trying to find a one of the sentences that I found so alienating and of course I can't find any examples right now, but it did. It really put me off. I had a, just a viscerally negative reaction to it, so it wasn't for me. It happens. So that's been my only disappointment, my only bail, and otherwise Reading Rush is going great. I am not definitely not going to probably finish any of these books by, what's the deadline, my Midnight Sunday? Maybe one? I don't know. No, I don't think so. I don't want to finish any of these that quickly, but then I have about four or five days left in the month. So my plan is to finish as much as possible up of the, these books that I've just told you about and books that I've been reading since long before. And I think I can po quite possibly finish almost mo most of them other than the, the ones that I'm doing a buddy read on a weekly basis the ones that I'm just reading on my own time I will have time to really sink into them and hopefully finish a bunch of them up in a slow reading kind of way because I've been reading them <laughs> since April because then it's women in translation month starting August 1st and I have an ambitious TBR the video will should go up in the next week I haven't filmed it yet but my plan is to film it this weekend and have it up during the week and I'm really really stoked for that and I'm gonna share one that I'm planning to start just before the end of August so maybe a day or two before my next Friday reads because I'm doing a zoom chat discussion on it with two dear friends and that is three summers by Margarita Liberaki, translated from the Greek by Karen van Dyck gorgeous cover it just sounds like such a Sean book it's a story of three sisters growing up in the countryside near Athens before World War II. I mean, it doesn't get much more Shawnee than that. Well, I'm not doing a buddy read per se, just, and in fact, I'm not going to be doing very many buddy reads in the future. I, I'm moving more in the direction of, let's just read the book at our own pace, set a deadline, and then have a Zoom chat that I'll put on my channel. That's, I think, far better for me with my slow reading tendencies. If I know that I have to be ready for a Zoom chat, in two months, I will start the book today, read it at my own pace, and I'll be ready for that Zoom chat. I don't, I think I'm done with this checking in once a week or something. Uh, other than, you know, let's still do a little bit of that, but I think this is much more my speed. So, in, I think August 10th, I can't remember the date, it's in my calendar, you don't care, but in early August, I'm gonna have that Zoom chat with two bookish friends, Electra, she's been on my channel a time or two. She and her husband now live in Istanbul. And she's Greek, so she hasn't read it. But she's going to read it. She's reading it, I think, in English. I don't know. She reads in so many languages. Knowing her, she's probably reading a Turkish translation. And Cecilia, who you have seen on my channel from Singapore, who you've met many times on my channel as well. And she's the NRYB book queen. So she, her July selection for one of her many NYRB book clubs is this book. So she has read it already. So the three of us will do a Zoom chat on this book, and it should go up on my channel mid-August. I'm telling you all this just in case anybody else wants to, if you were planning to read it, have it read by then, and you can participate in the comments. I will also be doing something similar on another book, so I'll tell you more about that next week. Okay, well, as I've been sitting here, it's gotten more and more humid. Oof. Everybody stay safe. Thanks for watching.